What's going on everybody? Welcome to a delayed version of the Scale News Update where we talk about the topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the last week. This week we've got another big week full of news. Jump right into the topics. Over the last week, RC Four Wheel Drive has announced that they're going to be offering an over-under geared transfer case for the TF2 and similar vehicles. Now, this allows you to spin the front tires faster than the rear tires. This aids in turning and in climbing ability. There is some downsides to over-under, such as extreme side hilling and things like that. It may want to wash the front end out, but in general, a lot of people really like to run an over under gearing setup, me included. So this is a nice offering for those of you who are really trying to get the most out of your RC four wheel drive vehicles. I'll put the links to that product in the description below. Last week, we talked about the new HPI scale builders kit, and they finally dropped all of the details on this, including the price. Now, the price for this kit is listed at $249. Now, if you remember, this kit doesn't include wheels, tires, or a body, or of course, all of the electronics, which you wouldn't normally expect to see in a kit anyway. But seeing that come in at $249, even with some of the upgrades that it does come with, such as aluminum links and front CVD axles, it's still a little bit high, I feel. It's just not quite there. It seems like that kit should really try and land somewhere in that $199 range, but we'll see what the market thinks and if that $249 along with this new concept of a scale builders kit is enough to entice people to start picking up that HPI Venture. So far, the Venture has just not caught on as much in the market with sales, partially because of price, partially because of you know parts availability kind of being a little bit up in the air and the aftermarket not jumping on it as much either. Maybe the scale builders kit will pick up a little bit more steam than the ready to run version, but time will tell. It doesn't look like we'll actually expect to see that kit until early 2019 at this point at the very least, but we'll keep an eye on it, see what it looks like. Last week we saw some new servo options pop up from Traxxas. Now they finally have some servos with some decent power and hopefully they hold up better than their current line of servos. However, the price that they released these at is way outside of the market norms. We'll have to really see what these do in the market. And honestly, I don't see any reason to pick up these servos at these prices. They're just not in line with what you would expect to see for power to dollar and quality range. They look like rebranded servos that we've seen for a really long time through various other names for a fraction of these prices. Maybe they're not the exact same servos, but they look really close. And something that a lot of people don't know is that there's not a lot of servo manufacturers. There's a very small handful of factories that actually produce most of the servos that you see in the industry. These more than likely are very similar to some of those ones that you see for a much lower price range. Until they're in the hands of those people who want to spend $100 or $150 for one of these servos, we'll have to see if they're actually all they're cracked up to be with that price tag. I'll put the links to those servos in the description below in case you're more interested in finding out some details. Crawler Innovations is releasing a new line of heavyweight foams. Now, these are a much more dense, much more firm, single stage closed cell foam than their original closed cell foam options. It looks like these foams are pointed more towards vehicles that are trying to push the limits at speed probably could have used these on the monthly mayhem drag bolt, but they weren't out until just now. So if you guys are needing a foam for your applications that are, you know, higher speed or heavier trucks, things like that, these foams might be for you. I'll put the link to the Crawler Innovations website in the description below. You can find out all of the details listed from Crawler Innovations. Horizon announced that they're going to be offering the Rock Ray and the Baja Ray in a bind and drive option. These vehicles will come ready to hook up to a Spectrum radio if you've already got one and looks like they come in some new color options thinking the orange looks pretty good. So if you're already a Spectrum user and you're looking for one of these vehicles, maybe one of these will be the version for you. This week we see a new release from FTX called the Fury. Now th this is a fairly inexpensive, but still up there, ready to run crawler. FTX produces some lower price options. However, this is one of the first ones that I've seen from them that actually has a smaller or more scale sized ring and pinion gear. The body on it is a Jeep style with an angry eyes looking grill, but overall looks 
pretty cartoonish with you know bad decals and things like that but they are moving some of the design aspects of this vehicle to be more closely representative of what some of the current trends are with these smaller ring and pinion gears like in the SCX-10 II, the Venture and the Viterra Ascender. It does come with metal links. It's a brushed system in there. It does come with LEDs in the bumper, not the body. Overall, it doesn't look like anything too exciting and it's from a brand that you know isn't going to be quite as well supported. So for the money, not something I would probably jump on quickly, but it is interesting to see some of the paths that these lower cost brands are starting to take. I'll put a link to the vehicle in the description below so you can check out a little bit more about it. So that's gonna do it for the news topics for this week. Let's round out the week though with a few question and answers. We'll start with the post that I put on Instagram. First question says, how much one-to-one -one experience did you have prior to becoming involved in the one-tenth scale RC crawling industry? My experience actually went the other way. I did the scale rock crawling side, and then I actually got involved a little bit with more of the full size and the competing side in full size. Spotting in one-to-one -one comp crawling is a lot like driving an RC car. You know, you're standing away, you're looking at better vantage points, you tell the vehicle what to do, and then hopefully it works out like you planned. Next question says, it kind of bothers me to see a Jeep Cherokee the same dimensions of a full-size pickup truck. I know they are models and art, but still looks weird. Why is there so much variance in 110 scale models? Because they're not 110 scale models. It's a 110 scale classification of RC, which kind of is more representative of electronics than it is of the actual like scale of the vehicle. They build one base with a decent size wheelbase, and then you have to basically fit bodies to that. Most people aren't going to want something that's exactly 110 scale to a Jeep Cherokee. You know, they want a base that they can build whatever they want off of because a lot of people are going to take that Cherokee body off and put something that actually has frame rails on top of it. So it's just a matter of making a base that's usable for whatever the end user wants to build. I get the argument, but in reality, you have to look at the big picture and how these things really work. This one says, do a custom rat rod project for Monthly Mayhem. Speaking of Monthly Mayhem, now that it's over, we had asked for a bunch of recommendations on what to do for the next Monthly Mayhem. And people had all kinds of ideas, but they forget that you have to come up with an idea that you can do a challenge with that both of us can do from a distance that can be measured, not just like build the best scale truck. Like you can't measure that. So people don't understand that Yes, build this. Like, okay, well, what are you gonna challenge it by? You can't just say, what's the best one? It just doesn't work. And I don't understand why people didn't get that. The next one says, what was the most fun about the deadbolt build? I imagine you mean the drag bolt, the deadbolt, drag bolt, whatever you wanna call it. Um, honestly, it was just the actual thrill of trying to get those little mile per hours at a time, keep it straight, keep it looking cool, and uh, having fun, so. They're all fun in their own way. That one was exceptionally fun though. Now we'll jump over to the Facebook page and read some of the questions from there. This one says, is 3D printing actually a viable option for functional RC parts? Uh, you broke a lot of parts, mounts, etc. in the drag bolt series. Yeah, parts can be designed and printed, but if they break easily, what's the point? That's a, it's a very good point because I've never been one to really trust 3D printed parts in high stress functional areas. For the drag bolt, that's a one-off car that you know I'm expecting to put extremely high forces on, things like that, and you can beef them up and try and make them as strong as you want. You can print it with nylon and PTFE or ABS, all kinds of different things, but in the end, it's still 3D printing, and people talk about it being close to injection molding strength and a bunch of different things. In reality, 3D printing high strength or functional parts, I'm really weary about, and I don't necessarily find it to be the best practice. So you can do it, you can use it, but in the end, there's better materials a lot of times. Some are just not as easy to make happen as others. This one says, if Axial brings back the XR10, will Vanquish start making upgrades? This is probably referring to the post that was on the Axial social media page saying, you know, something about bringing back the XR10. And it was, I'm almost positive, just one of those posts, just talking, making something up to talk about, to bring back engagement. I would put a stack of money on the table saying that Axial is not going to be bringing back the XR10 anytime soon. Next question says, seriously considering the new G-Made bomb for my next trail truck, have you had one in your hands yet? And would you recommend it or should I be looking elsewhere? I have had a bomb in my hands. I haven't built one myself. Overall, it doesn't look that bad. The only problems that I've heard so far is the transfer case wanting to kind of separate and let gears skip. 
I don't know yet. I probably need to get one in my hands before I really form an ex you know, a strong opinion on it. But so far it looks like their best one yet. It's not saying a lot from Gmate, but it does look like their best one. The last one for Facebook says, have you personally done any FPV racing with ground vehicles? I haven't done any head-to-head -head racing with FPV ground vehicles. I have put FPV systems in ground vehicles and driven them around. It was a lot of fun, specifically a dancing rider. But beyond that, I haven't done any actual racing. And the very last set of questions will be off the YouTube community page. First question says, what's the cost involved in the Drag Bolt series? Cost and, you know, there was a lot of value of parts used. I am super lucky to know a lot of people in the industry and they understand that Matt and I are both providing a content that puts their name out there. So we are able to get parts at a much lower or nothing cost on some things. So, you know, in the end, the cost was my time and a lot of work. So I don't know what my actual out of pocket costs were. If I wanted to add up retail, I, I'd probably rather not actually do the math on that. This question says, what is the music you used in the Axial Fest videos for this year? I get all of my music off epidemicsound.com. It's a subscription thing. You pay about 20 bucks a month. You get a ton of music options. You can download whatever you want from there. All of the music I use, I get through that subscription. Next question says, the short course drag cars are getting really big. Do you think you and Matt could do a monthly mayhem to see who can do 132 feet in the quickest time? I do like that idea. I don't know about monthly mayhem, but I want to build a uh, drag car anyway, just myself, just for fun. I want, I really want to use that J Concepts Fox body, Mustang body, and those new uh, wheels and tires that J Concepts came out with as well. So I want to build one maybe here in the next couple of months myself. This question says, is there an interior for the TRX4 Bronco? Actually, I touched on an option for that last week with Knight's Customs, where they're going to be doing a print your own base and then be offering a bunch of different options as well. Looks like a really cool way to be able to get an interior into something like your TRX4 Bronco for a much lower cost. Definitely go back to last week's video, check that out think that you'll find something you might like. And I think with that one, guys, that's going to do it. I appreciate you guys dealing with the delay in this week's video. As always, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your week and look forward to the Scale News update coming back on schedule next Monday. Thanks for watching, guys. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not already. Drop a comment with your feelings on any of the stories we talked about. And we'll see you on the next one.